Well, good evening. It's good to see everybody on this beautiful Lord's Day. Amen. I hope y'all had a good week this week. Beautiful day today. I just thank the Lord once again for the services we had over the weekend. And uh, just the Lord was just, he's so good. He is so good. So I just like to once again just welcome everybody to tonight. It looks like some of you still about half asleep, but that's okay. We're here tonight to, to worship the Lord together and see what the Lord's got in store for us tonight. As far as any updates and prayer requests, do we have any new prayer requests to add to our prayer request list tonight? Any prayer requests? Yes. Yes. Cole Jackson. Any other prayer requests? Yes. Yes. What was that again? Amen. Amen. Any other prayer request? What's, what was his name again? Terry Owens. Terry Owens. Any other prayer requests? Yes. The name I gave Sunday, Tim Lincoln. Mm-hmm. Daniel Gwynn. Is that some of Laura? Any other prayer requests? Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. What was that last name? Okay. Any others? Uh, you probably heard about the wreck today, this morning that happened out on Holly Grove School Road. Young man, Matthew Patterson. Uh, don't know his age. He was he was killed in a car wreck. That's actually Heath McKenzie's stepson. I think he's a, is he a policeman at Carthage, I believe. So uh, remember that family in your prayers. Any others at this time? Okay. Yes. Yes. You want to talk about an epidemic. There's a lot of things with young people that's going on. As you hear about suicide and, and, and drug abuse and, and just so many things. I mean, uh, shootings, yeah, yeah. But nobody, you never hear anything about that, but it's, it, it truly is. Uh, out there, and, and, and it's around us right now. I mean, I said, I, just this week, I've had two two calls from a young man that's, that's struggling. But thank the Lord, it, it, you know, he's given me the opportunity to witness to him, and, and he called me yesterday and said he was feeling much, getting much better, and we talked about the Lord. But uh, so, I just pray that the Lord would put young people in all of our lives that are are, are questioning those things and facing those things, and. And, and let us, most importantly, the Lord minister to them, but minister also to them through us that we show that we care about them uh, where they may not be that care. Uh, and through, and I know through us fostering kids uh, for, for a while that the young ones that we kept in our house and the things that they would share with us, even from their own parents, was just unreal. Uh, so I, I tell you what, I just thank the Lord tonight the family and my mom and daddy that I was brought up in and the love that I was showed because as I look around more and more, there's so many kids out here that never, ever see that kind of love or, and care in their lives. And, and, it, and it's so sad. So, so, yeah. Any others at this time? I know we've got a long list here and a lot of them. Uh, so, Bubba, I'm going to ask you if you would just pray. The Lord knows these names that we called up. Uh, he knows the hearts now, the unspokens, the situations. And I'm just thankful tonight that I, I, I stand up here with full faith and know and trust, or I wouldn't be up here, that God is still on the throne and he's still answering prayers and he's still restoring lives. And I believe that and I've seen that and I'm trusting him now for those calls tonight that there's going to be testimonies that come out of that tonight. Amen.
Amen and amen. Just a couple of announcements. Of course, remember Saturday, kids be here at the church at 10 o'clock, or I think some's going to meet us over at Miss Lucille's house. Uh, but if not, then we'll have lunch, and then we'll come back. So I'm just looking forward to that. So spread the news. We'll, I'll be here at the church. We'll leave here around 10 o'clock to go do that cleanup for them then. so And then Sunday, we'll be having a baby dedication service. We'll be having three three babies, so just be in much prayer for that service and the message there, and then also, of course, that uh, uh, next Sunday night, we'll be having our special singing, so look forward to that, invite someone out to that, uh, I thank the Lord how uh, it's been supported the last several times, so just please come out for that, and then, of course, remember the blood drive, if you hadn't signed up, you can still get an appointment, still taking appointments for the blood drive here at the church on April the 30th, uh, in memory of Chase Fraley, is there anything else? Any announcements or anything? Okay, I just need to see the deacons very briefly after church also. And I believe that's all I got for right now. So we'll have a congregational hymn, and then we'll have the offering. Amen. Oh, and just say a little prayer for me. I got to have an ultrasound in the morning on my arm just to see what this place is that's come up, and we'll see. Go from there. We can all stand. We're going to sing Amazing Grace. It's number 230 if you want to find it in the hymn book.
time we could have the ushers come forward for the afternoon offering. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us back tonight. Let the words that are spoken tonight fill the church through the Holy Spirit. Father, we are so blessed to have the promise of eternity with you. For those who know you through your son, Jesus Christ, and for that we pray, amen. specials tonight. Sister Rebecca, if you come. I'll be patient with me as I sing this I might lose my voice or whatever but uh, just just listen to it instead of how I sing it please I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before no sad goodbyes will there be spoken for time won't matter anymore Beulah land I'm longing for you and someday Just a few more days to labor, then I'll take my heavenly flight. Beulah land, I'm longing for you, and someday on the I'll stand. <laughs> 
you 
Yeah. Always enough for me. Hey, this world will never satisfy me. Nothing in this world will ever satisfy me. And the only thing I can find satisfaction in is in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you today that I know that I know that I know he is always enough for me. And I pray tonight that you can say that also. Just be in prayer for Jenny. She probably didn't want me to say nothing about this, but her grandma's having a tough time now to the point where she really don't know you, correct? And many of y'all, y'all have experienced that in y'all's families with Alzheimer's. And whenever you're with someone that you've loved, that you've cherished, that you've been around all your life, and then for them to have a conversation with them and not know who you are, I, I've never had that happen before. So I can't tell you, you know, the shoes that you're walking in now. But you know what you're going through, and many of you know what she's going through. And I know that's a tough time, but there again, as she just sung that song, we know that the Lord is enough, and he's going to see you through this, and the whole family through this in the days ahead. Amen? Amen. All right, if you got your Bibles tonight, turn to Jonah. We're going to camp out here for a while, the next several weeks. We're going to be right back in chapter 1. It's been a few weeks, and as a, and once again, if I was to ask you, uh, y'all again, what is this book of Jonah about? Most people, especially kids, would say it's all about Jonah and what? The whale. The whale. The whale. Absolutely right. In fact, the Bible doesn't say it's a whale here. It says it's a what? Great fish to start with. And you see a reference... Jesus talking back over in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 40, he talks about the whale's belly in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 40. But I want to tell you uh, once again that this book is not about Jonah and the fish. The book is about Jonah and God. And that's what we need to realize today. We look all around us about everybody else, but we need to take an accountability that is about me and God. Amen. And you can put your name right there in that, uh, tonight. You see, Jonah, as we see here, is mentioned in this book 18 times. Many of you probably knew that in these, in these four chapters here. The fish is only mentioned four times. But when you look at God here, God is mentioned 31 times in this book of Jonah. Now, that's in the King James Version. I don't know about those other Bibles, what it's mentioned, but in the King James Version here. And look how it begins again here in chapter 1 and verse 1. Before we do that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you once again tonight. I thank you for the number that has come out tonight, Lord. I just thank you for how you continue to bless here in this church, Father, uh, each and every week, Father. And I, I just pray above all, Lord, yes, we want the numbers to grow, grow, grow. But as I said before, I pray that, Father, we would grow spiritually mature, Lord, and closer to you in all that we do, Father, in the numbers that we have each and every week. I pray that we will be a, a changed person, that we wouldn't be the same yesterday or today, that we'll be even different tomorrow and closer to you, Father, in our walk with you, Lord. And I pray tonight as we look into your word, as we see this account here in God's word, the account that is true, that is real, because all of your word is real, is true from Genesis to Revelation, Father. It's all inspired by you, Father, and we thank you for that even now, Lord. And Father, I pray that you would just uh, lead God and direct us tonight, Father. And I pray that we would think on that thought the presence of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, Father. And I thank you for that presence that I feel even now, Lord, that we feel tonight, Father, through the songs that have already been sung, through the fellowship that we have, Father. And I'm thankful that you're here with us tonight, Lord. Not in this building, Father, made of stone, but in these hearts, Lord, in these souls of each individual here tonight. We thank you, Lord, and we just ask you all these things in your precious name. And there's only one name, and it's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. So look how it begins here again in chapter 1. It says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise. In other words, get up. That's what that means. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. 
But, here we go again, see that? But Jonah rose up to flee, and I underline this in my Bible here. This, chat, this verse 3 is a key verse tonight. Rose up to flee unto Tarshish. You know, there's a lot of Christians today that God is talking to are fleeing from what he has, their, has them wanting them to do. Amen. It says flee, flee, to flee unto Tarshish, and here's what I underlined also, from the presence of the Lord. And went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish. And here we see that phrase there again, from what? The presence of the Lord. Do you hear those words there, that, that expression that's given two times here in these opening verses that we see here? It is the presence of the Lord. And notice something. He's not going toward, you might say, the presence of the Lord. The Bible says that he is going what? from the presence of the Lord. I want you to keep in mind what I just said there and think about that tonight. And I would say that the, the book of Jonah here is about Jonah and the presence of the Lord. I think that our daily lives is about you and me as individuals and the presence of the Lord in our life. Are we running to the Lord or are we running away from the Lord? When he has things for each and every one of us that he wants us to do for his will and his honor and his glory. Amen. So, and if you're, if you're talking about the application to us here, as we see that and talk about this here is about Jonah and the presence of the Lord. It's about you and the presence of the Lord, me in the presence of the Lord. Think about that tonight. And really, in a sense, we are never out of the presence of our Lord. And listen to me tonight, because first, God is everywhere. God is everywhere. He, he, he's, he is that omnipresent God, which means he's everywhere at the same time. And I'm so thankful tonight that wherever I may be at in my life, where, you know, when I was over in Lithuania and sick and wanting to come home and didn't know if I was going to get back, God was with me. When I'm over at the hospital tomorrow to get this ultrasound, guess what? God's going to be with me. When I lay down tonight in my bed, God is going to be with me. And guess what? Right now, as I stand right here in this pulpit, God is with me because he lives within my heart. Amen. I'm thankful to that tonight, my omnipresent God, which means there again, he's with us everywhere. I love what the psalmist said in Psalms 139. He said in verse 8 through 10, Psalms 139, we'll read that, pop it up for just a minute. There you go. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Verse 9. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, in verse 10, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall, what? Hold me. What's he saying? He's saying there geographically, location don't change for God. Do you know that? It don't change. I'm here tonight. Lord willing, I'll be in Lakeview later on after the service tonight. Guess what? God's still with me. I'll change my locations, but God won't change his location. Uh, time doesn't change God. Thank the Lord. The circumstance doesn't change God. God is always the same, and God is everywhere. He is the all-present God. And if you are a believer tonight, you have trusted Jesus as your personal Savior. Listen, hey, you have his promise on it. What he say, uh, what, what he say in Matthew 28 and 20? He said, what? Lo, lo, lo. What I am with you, what? Always. Even unto what? The end. The end of everything. The end of the world. I'm still going to be with you, Mike. I'm still going to be with you, John. Even wherever you at in your life, whatever you face tomorrow and the days ahead, you are my child and I'm not going to leave you and I'm going to be there for you to see you through whatever it may be. Hallelujah to the Lord. I love what Hebrews chapter 13 and 5 says. He says there, very familiar, I will never, 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 never leave thee, nor what? Forsake thee. Have you ever had people leave you before? Have you ever had people forsake you before? Yeah, people within your own family. But since I've become the child of the king, he's always there. Always there. You know, I just want to stop right there and say, thank you, Lord, for that. 
that I have that promise. Ain't y'all glad tonight for the, con the, the constant presence of God? I'm thankful for that tonight. Preacher can't be there for you. So-and-so can't be there for you, but God is there for you. The constant pres presence of God. And don't miss this principle. You and I have God's constant presence, but that does not mean that you are living today in God's conscious presence, if that makes sense. Listen to me. You see, when the Lord saves a person, what does he do? He comes to live in him or her, and he never withdraws that salvation. He never withdraws himself from the person's life. Now, listen me out tonight. But let me tell you what he will do. We see an example right here. He will, at times, withdraw his peace. He will, at times, withdraw his joy. He will, at times, withdraw his fellowship. The consciousness, you might say, of his nearness. Now, why does he do that? Why does he do that? To get her attention. I see a perfect picture right here. When Jonah ran, when Jonah was trying to get, get, out, get, get away from the Lord, guess what? He got his attention, didn't he? And he'll get our attention too, friend, tonight. He, he, he withdraws to draw us to himself. So many times I found myself out of the will of God and wanting to do what might. But guess what? God got my attention. He withdrew, withdrew some things from me, some happiness in my life. And that was he done that to draw me back to him. He hides his face at times so that we can't see what he's doing to cause us to realize how desperately we need him. And we are a desperate people and we desperately need our Lord each and every day. I need him. I need thee every hour. And to drive us to seek the Lord with all of our heart. You see, Jonah here, he made a, you might say, a conscious decision here that he was going to run from the presence of the Lord. Are you here tonight and you know that you, you've made a conscious decision that God has showed you something in your life that he would want you to do, but you've made a conscious decision, I'm not going to do that. I have been in a church before, and I have heard it from the lips of a preacher say, I don't care what the Bible said, that's what we're going to do. You're stepping on thin ground then. We've always done it like that. Well, if it goes against God's word, that it ain't right. Regardless of what Mike Garner says, my opinion don't matter. What matters is God's word, and that's for all of us. Amen? So Jonah here, he made this decision in his mind. Listen, no, I'm not going to do it. So what he done, he run from the presence, you might say, it says our presence of the what? The Lord. You're never out of God's presence, but we can run from, you might say, a conscious ruling presence of the Lord in your life. In fact, I would go so far to say every person in listening tonight and may watch this video later and, and, and the man speaking to you right now, old Mike, me, we are all moving in one of two directions. And listen to this. We are either moving to the presence of the Lord or we're moving away from the presence of the Lord. Think about that tonight. Think about that tonight. We're either moving to the presence of the Lord or we are going from the presence of the Lord. Do you remember how the Bible began? Do you remember back in, back in Genesis? Do you remember when Adam and Eve, what did they do? They sinned, didn't they, in the garden. What happened to them because of their sin? The Bible basically it tells us there that they were, what, sent out of, the, out of Eden. They were literally sent out of the presence, what, of the Lord. Out of that peace place, you might say, or out of that place of, of, of near communion and fellowship. I found myself that I wouldn't have that close fellowship with the Lord because many times I make a conscious decision that I was going to do something that I know that I shouldn't be doing in life. Think about that. that, that that's why Jesus came, y'all. He came to bring us back into fellowship with God, the Father, to bring us back into the holy presence of God. Amen? I think one of the saddest verses in the whole Bible, and as I was studying, is, is a verse that speaks of Cain, Adam's son. The Bible uh, says in Genesis 4 and 16 that he went out from the presence of the Lord. And I say it again, every one is either moving from or to. 
What are you doing tonight? What is Mike doing tonight? People who do not, uh, people who, 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 do, who don't know God as their Savior, they're not going into the presence of the Lord in eternity. They're going away from the presence of the Lord. And that's not just going to happen when they die. That's true today, too. Think about that. And what is true of them, that there's an application, listen to me, to us as believers tonight. Though we're, are, we're going to uh, live in the presence of our Lord forever in heaven, we know that. Praise the Lord for that. You can be a Christian today, and I can be a Christian today, and not be living at the moment in fellowship with God, with the, with the near sense of his presence and his joy in your life and my life. You see, God uh, was in Israel. Uh, he, he was in Nineveh here. He was in Tarshish here. He was in Joppa here. He was uh, in the boat here. He was in the fish. He was uh, on the shore. Listen, it was not about where God was. Listen, it was rather about Jonah and where he's supposed to be. Amen. That's what it's about here as we see this. And study is the presence of the Lord it is the place of unbroken fellowship. It's a place uh, of obedience tonight. We find ourselves many times in the old fish's belly when we not obey and not, don't we? A place of spiritual power and divine blessing. It, it's not location. It's not geographical. It's not some circumstantial, you might say, something going on there. It is spiritual. It's all spiritual. Hey, uh, let me uh, tell you, the presence of the Lord is the place of the greatest joy in your life. Do you know that? It is. Mm. And I'll have the greatest joy in this world when I'm in the presence of the Lord too. Everyday life. Amen? If you're not right with God, the presence of the Lord is, is the place of the greatest fear also. Think about that. Are you in the presence of the Lord tonight? We see it two times mentioned right here. It all depends on your relationship to that presence. You'll notice there in Jonah, in chapter 1 and verse 3, that the Bible says when he rose to flee from the presence of the Lord, he went down to Joppa, didn't it? Then he went down into the ship. Then in verse 5, he goes down there into the sides of the ship. And before it's over and done with, he goes down where? Down into the belly of the fish. And I got news for you tonight. If you're running from God, you're going to keep going down, 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 down. That's why so many people today is where they're at, because they keep running from the Lord and keep, you just keep going down, 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 and down. Do you, see, do you see a word picture here? Do you see that picture there about going down and down and down and down and down? Hey, any step. Out of the presence of the Lord is never a step up. Any step that we make in life, if it's not according to what God wants us to do, it's not a step up, it's a step down, and it's a step back. And many times it's going to cause us great, great suffering many times. It's always a step down. It's never a step in the right direction. It's always a step in the wrong direction. Uh, I hear people today and sometimes using that word. You hear that word today so many times, progressive. If you heard that several times, you hear it all the time. It's the time about progressive. And I wonder if they even understand that, that anything uh, that violates Scripture and goes against God is never progress. Do you know that? I hear about we need to, pro, you know, we need to uh, progress in education. We need to progress here. We need to be progressive in this and we need to be progressive in that. I got news for you. If all that stuff that we see in here today, if all that's going against Scripture here, it ain't progress. It's digression, you might say. In other words, it's a move in the wrong direction. We need to get back in the right direction. And it begins right here in our own individual lives here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. So I'd just like to simply ask you a question tonight as we study this book of Jonah. And it's this. Which direction are you moving? Which direction are you moving in right now, today? I ask myself that question. Are you running toward the Lord? Are you coming near to God? Closer to his heart? And more in line for his will in your life? 
or that he's taking steps to go in the wrong direction? Hmm. Only you can answer that. For me, I'll give you a testimony. I need to be moving more toward God. I do. Are you taking the steps going in the wrong direction? But I'm glad to report to you tonight that God trails a man. God trails a woman. I'm thankful for that. He never tricks him. He'll never trick you and he'll never trick me, but he trails me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Think about that. God stays after Jonah here. And I'm glad in a time, Cindy, of my rebellion and my running and my doing this, that God was on my trail and conviction come on my heart. And he loved me enough. And he got the King Hickory switch out. And he tore me up because I needed it. Because why he loved me. And I don't get up here to preach God's word to tear down people. I get up here to preach his word. Because we all need it in our life. To draw closer to him. But it's almost like today we pick and choose whatever we want in God's word. We just apply what little bit that we want to apply to us and put the other behind it. It'll be okay. It don't work that way. we got to apply it all to our life, right? But God stays after him here. I'm glad that God stayed after me. Why did he stay after Jonah? Why did he stay after me? Why has he stayed after you? Why? Because of God's great heart. That's what. And his heart's desire is that we would live in his presence. That's his desire. Don't you want to live in his presence tonight? I do. If you're not sure of your soul salvation, I say, don't, don't, don't you want to live in his presence forever? Yes. Wouldn't you like to know his presence today? I'm glad I do. And I pray that each and every one of you here tonight do. But if you don't, you can. Because he tells me, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And not that you may, but thou shalt be saved. He don't say I have to come to him in a three-piece suit. I don't have to come to him as a millionaire. I don't have to come to him as a white man, a black man, or a Hispanic man. I just got to come to him with a repented heart. And cry out to him and say, Lord, I need you. And it tells me right there when I do that, that thou shalt be saved. Amen. And if you're a Christian tonight, you know what I'm talking about. In fact, you know something? I got to thinking about this, and I've been there. You know who the most miserable people are on this earth? The most miserable people, in my opinion, is in the world is not the lost people. And I'm telling you this from experience. The most miserable people in this world are people who are saved and are out of fellowship with the Lord. Because I've been there in my life. And I come to realize that, man, the reason I'm so miserable, it ain't over here that this crowd is doing it and they're doing it and this and that. I'm so miserable because I know I'm not in God's will and I'm out of fellowship with the Lord. But there again, I'm so thankful that that there again, as we read later on, the word of God came to Jonah, what a second time. I'm so thankful that the Lord restored me and brings me back into that fellowship. You know why? You know what made me realize that? Because I knew that I was missing out on some stuff, and it was the blessings of the Lord. And I tell that to young people all the time at our pastor pals. Hey, don't, don't, Live the way I lived. Yes, I was young, young once like you. And I did have hair at one point. And I combed it. And I even blow dried it and used some hairspray once in a while. <laughs> but don't be hard-headed and miss out on the blessings that God has for you. That's why when we get older like that, we, we get some wiser and try to tell our young'uns, but a lot of times they don't listen. But a lot of them do listen. 
I'm so thankful for our young people here at this church. Ain't you? Amen. You see, lost people have no idea what they're missing out on. Some of you, listen, tonight you know you've been, maybe you've been in his, uh, that you've been in his presence. You've enjoyed the fullness of his presence. But maybe now, tonight, maybe there's one here tonight you're like Jonah here. Maybe you've, you've risen up and you've uh, gone out here. Maybe you're fleeing for something that the Lord has laid on your heart that you know you're supposed to be doing. Only you can answer that. And you're fleeing from the presence of the Lord. I just pray that the Lord would all help us to recognize that all, all of our life that we have left, just like all of uh, all the book of Jonah is, is about one thing, and if you don't get nothing else tonight, it's not about circumstances. It's not about things. It's not about other people. It's all about us and God. Me and God, think about that. That was sort of the title tonight, Jonah and God in his presence. And I just pray that the Lord will help us all live today, tomorrow, and every day in the presence of the Lord. Now, we're going to stop right there because we could go on for another 20 or 30 minutes. But we're going to, I want you to think about this this week and into next week. We're going to touch on a thing. How do I stay in the presence of the Lord? So you write down some things this week. And you call me or text me or have them next Wednesday night. How do, how do I stay in the presence of the Lord? Is it just coming to church? No. But just, I'm going to stop right there and leave it at that. And then we'll, then we'll move on. Then we'll move on. Amen? God's good, ain't he? All the time. All the time, God is good. So think about the night, the presence of the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you once again for just another week, another night that we can come back to your house, Lord. And Father, I just pray now, Lord, as we looked into your message tonight, as we looked into your word, Father, I pray that uh, the people here tonight got a message out of this that you spoke to their heart, Lord, and especially when we look at that verse in, uh, that ch uh, verse 3, Lord, in chapter 1 here, Lord. Uh, Father, and I pray, Lord, if, there, if, if one of us tonight, Lord, if we've risen up and we've fleed as we see Jonah here, Father, I just pray, Lord, that we realize it's not about our circumstances around us or our things or other people, Lord. It's all about uh, us, Lord, and you, Father. And, and I just pray, Father, that we just draw closer to thee, Lord, that we would realize that we need to be in your presence each and every day, Father. Lord, for you to use us a blessing, Father. And I pray tonight, Father, if we continue as we see there as Jonah went down, 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 if we continue on that path, Lord, Father, it's going to lead even further down, Father, into that, you might say, uh, whale's belly that may be out there for us, Lord. And now, Lord, as we get ready, Father, to have the altar call, Lord, Lord, I just pray, Father, if there's a need here tonight, Lord, if there's one here tonight, Father, that has a burden on their heart, just come to the altar, Father. I love this church family, Lord, as we'll come and gather around and pray for that one, that two, that three, whatever how many, Father, and ask that you just touch in whatever way, Lord. But above all, Father, if there's one here tonight, Lord, that their heart's burdened, that, they're, that they don't know, Father, that they're saved, that they're a child of the King, I pray, Father, they'd step out of pew, walk the, the, the aisle, Lord, and, Father, receive you tonight. Lord, we just ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. As we all stand, the altar's open tonight. Do you have a need? Do you have a prayer? Do you have a burden for a loved one? Do you have a burden for a lost child, a wayward child, a physical ailment, whatever, a, a doctor's visit this week that you may be going to have? Bring it all to the altar and let's pray about it. Let's pray about it.
all God's children said? Amen. Brother Wayne. I go that home there a lot. I was some poor old boy in that city who didn't eat for two months. I got a crowd of immediate family that's unsaved. Amen. Raised in the church three times a week. My girls raised Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, all their life. And they out in the world now kids and grandkids and none of them in church and I got a lot to pray about. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, Brother Wayne, but when I was growing up as a young man, I can remember my grandmas going to the altar, my grandpas, and they would cry out my name. And, and we don't see that anymore. It amazes me today, and I could go on, on, on and nut something, but it amazes me today how we're planning for a Walt Disney trip how we'll plan to go to the beach, how we'll plan for the things uh, next week and go plan to go play that, that ball tournament. We'll plan to do this, but we will not sit down with our children and our families and plan for their eternal life. Now, that's the most important thing. We can plan everything else, and, get, and I'm guilty of it just as anybody else. Plan my fishing trip, plan a turkey hunt trip, all these things we plan. It's really struck a nerve in me, but we will not sit down and plan for the eternal life of our own youngins and family. That's the most important thing that we can ever plan for. Amen? Amen. Uh, I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Just continue to pray for me. I need your prayers. I need your prayers every day. Because only, I just want to be the best servant that I can be for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's, that's the, my, my main goal until he calls me home. That's what I want to be. And be the best pastor that I can be for his, the sheep that he has blessed me with here at this church. I am so unworthy. But I just thank the Lord for allowing me to be here. Because you'll never know if he would take me out today and take me home. The relationships that's been built here from these young people to the oldest, to the oldest people. The, the impact that this made on my my life and my heart. You know, many days I can sit in the truck and the tears and think about some things and just sit in the truck and just cry and just thank the Lord for his blessings on me, on me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All hearts clear. Remember, kids, here at 10 o'clock, if you're going to ride the bus Saturday morning after we finish up, we'll, we'll go get you some lunch and we'll have a great day in the Lord there. And then, of course, remember Sunday services, baby dedication, and our singing Sunday night. All hearts cleared. God is good. Love y'all. But even greater what? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ loves you. If I see it, Brother Mike, if you would, close us in prayer. Yeah, I'd like to say one thing. You know, you could have 25 Christians standing up here, and not one of them took the same road to get there. That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. Everybody comes from somewhere. That's right. But you can all be a Christian. That's right. That's exactly right. You have to follow the Lord. I thank you, Lord, for allowing me to accept you as my Savior. Lord, I thank you for what you do in each of our lives, Lord, how you work through each other differently, Lord. But we all work for the same cause, for the cause of our Lord and Savior. Lord, we just ask you that we thank you for the service tonight, for the message you laid on Mike's heart. And, Lord, I just ask you to be with us as we leave here tonight, Lord, and keep us until, sun until Sunday morning. Lord, we just thank you for all that you do for us. And then we just ask you to be with all the spirit, Lord. Amen. Amen.